tonight. Well, the dreaded Asian silver and big head carp invade Lake Michigan as they've invaded the Illinois River. That was a main concern of biologists from three continents who gathered in downstate Peoria last week to deal with one of the most serious threats ever to face the inland waterways. As the first in a series of reports in the Great Lakes funded by the Joyce Foundation, Rich Samuels offers this fish story, which many will find more than a little scary. On the Illinois River, five miles downstream from Peoria, visiting fish biologists witnessed hundreds of leaping silver carp. For Canadian researcher Becky Cudmore, this was an eye-opener. I can see the shadows. Oh, can I? <laughs> <laughs> makes you real nervous. Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> okay, we just I'll change our <laughs> field. It was unbelievable. Never seen anything like it in my life. Even though this is your profession? This is my profession. And I've, uh, I've never seen a uh, fish jump that high. I've never seen that many jump. And certainly not anything that big. <laughs> and also they're very messy. I've never seen anything like that either. In the swift water just below the Peoria Lock and Dam, Becky's colleague Nick Mandrak snagged a big head carp. He too was impressed by the way these invasive species have taken over the river. It was uh, pretty incredible and uh, very sobering at the same time. That was a uh, great uh, indication to me that we just, we just don't want those fishes in the Great Lakes. Well, uh, we believe that because they, they feed on the lower um, food web that they would destabilize the entire food web of the Great Lakes and uh, would disrupt the native fish communities of the Great Lakes as we know them and change them forever. And uh, that's not including the, the other social economic consequences, uh, the indirect effect on the, um, the uh, salmon fishery, the indirect effect or the direct effect of uh, people actually being hit by uh, carp uh, flying out of the water while they're boating. It's, yeah, it's unbelievable. And the, you know, the, the amazing thing about it is they don't tend to do this in their native range. And this is an example of how species that are introduced uh, can behave in very unpredictable manners and have very unpredictable consequences. Asian carp were brought to the U.S. in the 1970s essentially to do cleanup work in catfish farms. They escaped into the Mississippi River during the floods of 1993. The extent to which they've displaced native species in their new habitat is still a matter of conjecture. But the locals will tell you that sport fishing here on the Illinois River has changed since the Asian carp arrived. They're pretty much uh, ruining all the other species of fishing on the, the uh, Illinois River right here. The bass fishing, the, the late fall crappie fishing, uh, the cat fishing and white bass fishing has declined over the last couple summers here at the dam, as a lot of people attest to. Um, they're just, it's a, a nuisance. They definitely are taking up a lot of the biomass, which means, you know, there's a lot of space out there for fish, and whether it be largemouth bass or, you know, Asian carp. And right now there is a large biomass of Asian carp. So how are they directly affecting the bass, the buffaloes, those other species? We're still, you know, in the process of trying to find that out. Are we going to keep these fish out of Lake Michigan? We're going to do everything we can. Um, of course, you know we have an electric barrier in place. The barrier is on the sanitary and ship canal near Romeoville. It's supposed to replace an experimental electric barrier installed here in 2002. But the Army Corps of Engineers is months behind schedule in getting it online, and it can't predict when it will turn the juice on here. The problem? Money. Money, money, money. It's always been money with, with this project. It's been chronically underfunded ever since it was first authorized back in 1996. We just never had enough money to build the first barrier the way we really wanted to, to make it long-lasting, really powerful. So we ended up with this smaller, demo, what we call a demonstration barrier now, with a, about a five-year lifespan. And we're at four and a half years now of its life. The second barrier, we got $9.1 million to build it, not completely unexpected. The costs continue to grow as we go along, safety, 
is becoming more of a concern as we have more power in the water. Uh, there's some concerns with uh, na commercial navigation, the effect on barges, the potential for arcing. The U.S. House and Senate have passed separate bills mandating completion of the barrier, but they've yet to agree on common language, and when they do... Again, that's only authorization. We will still need the funding to back that up to make barrier one permanent, fully construct barrier two, make it a fully federal project, and to operate both barriers well into the future. Can we get that done in time, or are the fish going to win out? That's a good question. 16-5. 16. Huh? 16. Dwayne Chapman is a biologist with the United States Geological Survey. Controlling the spread of Asian carp is his passion. I got an opportunity around 2001, 2002 to really start working with these fish full time to see what I can do. And my goal is, to, you know, I don't want to waste the taxpayers' money. I want to, you know, to really have an impact on these fish and, and, and protect our native fish. That is what I'm about. I, mean, I think these fish are really cool and they fascinate me, but the whole point is let's do something about it, you know, about the problem. There's a silver carp. Chapman believes we can win the battle with these fish, provided we get them out of the water. If we can uh, increase the harvest through whatever means, then yes, we can control these fish. There is presently but one commercial fisherman on the Illinois River who sets his nets for Asian carp. At a processing plant in Thompson, Illinois, the fish are prepared for what's presently an exclusively Asian-American market. In the future, this operation hopes to manufacture Asian carp fish patties. And there are dreams of exporting the carp back to China, where these fish are considered good eating. We've gone to China, and, and we're working on that. The, the problem is it's very marginal. Uh, there's not much money to be made in it. They want to buy the product as cheap as possible. And, with transportation charges the way they are today, with fuel prices and everything, it's it's very, very marginal. So you have to really convince <clears throat> people here that these are good things to eat. Yeah. You start off flaying them just like you would a bass or anything else. Or, for, Biologist Dwayne Chapman believes that shouldn't be a problem. Oh, they're great. They're fantastic eating. And uh, they're bony. They have bones that are in the meat. And if you can learn to deal with those bones, then uh, the fish are just really good. What is your preferred way for preparing them? Oh geez, um, I have lots of favorite ways to eat fish. I'm quite the fish connoisseur. Um, but uh, uh, I made ceviche on Saturday that was a rave at a party, uh, which is a, a, it's a Latin American uh, way to prepare fish, marinating it with lime juice. But you don't have to do anything special to these fish to make them good to eat. If you like fried fish, then fried silver carp, fried big head carp, fried, fried grass carp are very good fish. Sport fishing is another way the carp might be controlled. Given their plankton diet, they are not caught by conventional angling techniques. But in the vicinity of Peoria, the current rage is shooting jumping carp with bow and arrow. The Asian carp problem is by no means unique to the Illinois River. The experts believe that preventing the spread of these invaders upstream is, in fact, an international problem. There is not a brick wall not, um, along the border in the Great Lakes. We share those lakes, and uh, we work very closely with American colleagues to try to protect those lakes. It absolutely is an international issue. Uh, Canada is just as concerned about it as uh, the United States is. Uh, we're fortunate enough that we're on the north side of the lakes and we, we don't have to deal directly with the, the invasion in the Mississippi. However, uh, we're, we're keeping close tabs on it and we're very concerned about it. Meanwhile, here on the Illinois River, as indeed on much of the Mississippi River system, the Asian carp continue to jump. And there's no sign that they're going to stop jumping anytime soon, if ever. For Chicago Tonight, this is Rich Simmons. At a carp derby in downstate Bath, Illinois, over the weekend, more than 1,800 Asian carp were netted. One angler is now nursing a black eye and a broken nose. And you guessed it, a jumping silver carp hit him in the face. Environmental reporting on Chicago Tonight is made possible in part by the Joyce Foundation, dedicated to protecting the Great Lakes, Fresh water at the heart of America.